Mm-hmm. Now, with us again, second half, we've come special this this hour. I get to shut up and listen. I know you're all grateful for that, and I appreciate that. But anyway, I want to introduce a minute a, a couple of Joe and Kelly Cannon who had kind of a special testimony to start with, and then a ministry they started on deliverance. A lot of things many people don't don't get into, especially Christians, because they don't believe it can happen. It isn't real. Whatever reason, they think Satan has went away. Even though the scripture tells us Satan walks around seeking whom he may devour. Yes. Now, if, if, that, were, if that were not true, that wouldn't be in the Bible. It's just that easy. Okay? It, it doesn't take a rocket science, uh, science to figure this out. So we're going to, I'm going to introduce Joe and Kelly. And they joined our fellowship, what, three years ago? Just about three years. And uh, they were listening to the broadcast when they lived out in Oklahoma. <coughs> and Kelly was going through some problems uh, in the mental hospital. True, Kelly? Yes. Being treated for problems, mental problems. I remember talking to her on the phone before she was delivered from those things, and uh, she was in misery. And Joe, of course, was calling, talking to us. And I do anything I could. I, I didn't understand the battle enough to really help him. They couldn't touch somebody. It did, and learned how to help deliver Kelly from this oppression and possession. And it's worked. And they went to school to learn how to help others do the same thing. So I'm going to be quiet now. I'll let Joe and Kelly take over and, and do some, uh, give, maybe give a testimony. And a little bit of teaching for the next few minutes on what it means uh, to be delivered from the powers of Satan. And folks, I urge you to pay attention, please. We're all susceptible to the wiles of Satan. We really are. Mm-hmm. And if, if the devices didn't work, if your snares didn't work, we will be warned about the Bible. So please pay attention. Mm-hmm. Well, let's welcome Joe and Kelly Cannon. Thank you, Pastor Bush, for allowing us to do this. Kelly, could you give a, just a short testimony of what took place in your life in 2009? I, uh, around just soon after that, um, I wrote a, my testimony. And I, the booklet I wrote was called Can Hell Save Me? And I can give a little synopsis. Um, mm-hmm. From my conversion in 1990 until 2009, the demonic spirits had been there all along. These demonic spirits had been tormenting me all my all of my life. Once I had come to Yeshua or Jesus Christ, these demon spirits had become dormant, waiting for me to drop a protective wall around me. When my faith became weak, my rebellion became strong. When I allowed sin to take control of my life, they came in like a flood. The demons that I allowed to enter put me in a state of mental illness. They also opened a gateway for the sex slave demons to enter in. It all started when I uh, shared smoking marijuana with a non-believer. Sharing that with an infidel opened up gateways for demonic spirits to enter in from the infidel to me. It was a transference. This was done several times. Um, Another incident was when I was sharing the same uh, substance with a full-blown New Ager. This invited more demonic spirits to enter in. This person was what they call a white witch. She claimed to be light and she practiced witchcraft, which include, she did Reiki, which is a body massage that involves chanting uh, for permission to adjust the body. She used crystals, Incense burning, which is to cover up the the marijuana smoke, um, and to use meditation music. These rituals were a huge door opener for demons to enter in. This was an addiction. The demonic spirit had complete and total control. Having that sin of addiction is rebellion (coughs) against God. Yes. People, if we as Christians are claimed to be born again believer, spirit filled in Jesus Christ, step into a realm of sin, compromising our faith in Jesus Christ, we can and we will allow demonic spirits to take authority in our life. So with all that said, I got involved in spiritual battles with uh, against Satan and I realize very few people get involved in this field. It's a, in fact, what I've learned since then, 
there's two ministries Satan hates more than any any ministry out there. One is praise and worship, and the other one is deliverance. Uh, those two fields does more damage to him than anybody else in the pulpit can do. Um, we started off in this teaching is going to be something called pre-creation. Phil, would you bring me to the screen on pre-creation? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> As you notice here in Ezekiel chapter 28, you see that it says God the Father, Lucifer, Gabriel, Michael, and all the other angels. And this was before, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hey, let's go to the next frame, please. It says here in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, which is the ruby, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of the tabrets, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. I was looking up the word tabrets in the strong adjustic accordance, and it means tambourines. And that's a strong accordance, uh, 85, 95 in the Hebrew. So he was made to be rhythm. He was made to have worship. He was made to bring in the praises of God into the kingdom. Let's go to the next verse. Well, let's back up on that first. And it also says the word pipes here. And when you look that up in Strong's 5345, in the Hebrew is Rakeb, which means Bezo. In the Webster Dictionary it says the upper part of a colic or ring, which uh, encompasses and fastens the stone. So all these stones and rubies and pieces of um, gold that Satan was carrying was fastened in his body. It says here, Thou art the anointed cherub that, co- uh, that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God, Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, which means brilliant stones. A cherub is the most highest angel that God has created. They are considered watchers. They are considered the ones that protect nations. They are the ones that does a lot of God's business in heaven. In order to find out what a cherub but I really suggest to read Ezekiel chapter 10. It really describes what a cherub is. They had four faces, sometimes four heads. They were, had wings to cover their hands and their feet, so their wings went from their shoulders to their feet. It says here in 24, I mean 2814, uh, upon the holy mountain of God. That's God's throne room. That's his kingdom. That's where he does all his business. Uh, Let's go to the next frame. Okay. Now, Satan has fallen. It says in Isaiah 14, 13 and 14, For thou hast said in thine heart, now listen to what this says. There's one word that gets repeated. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Now, here Satan is trying to take over God's holy mountain. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregations in a place of control <clears throat> in the sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Satan has now established himself as he believed to be more powerful than God. Unfortunately, he's thrown down. If we read all of Ezekiel uh, 28, starting at verse 12 to 19, you see how Satan's kingdom came apart on him, how his overthrown came apart. But he was cast out of the kingdom of God. 
Let's go to the next one. Okay, now since we established that pre-creation God was created, we had God, Lucifer, Gabriel, Michael, and all the other angels, something had to replace Satan, and that was man. We were created to give God glory. We were created to give him joy. We were created to bring him pleasure. We were created to be, oh, just the most wonderful thing in his creation. We are the key point of his creation. It says here, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. We are God's creation. But Satan hated us. He hated that we are his replacement. Here's what things become to uh, have problems. We saw Ezekiel 28 verse 13 that Satan was in the Garden of Eden. The fall of man in Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 7 and verses 14 and 17 I really suggest to read, but let's look at 4 to 5. For the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Uh, Satan's already cast a lie. He watched the woman for years. Maybe it was several hundred years, maybe several thousand, maybe a couple of millions, but he watched Eve in the garden. He knew he could tempt her, but he couldn't tempt Adam. Verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's the problem we have today. We've become like gods. We judge people, we criticize people, we torment people, so we think we're better than everybody else. Here we have Satan's kingdom working in us. This is Galatians chapter 5, 19 and 21. If we're not of Christ, Satan establishes his temple right here in our heart. Our lives are his. We belong to him. Because of the fall in the garden, Adam and Eve sold their uh, dominium, their rights, and they gave that to Satan. We are the curse. We are uh, cursed to uh, a grave of destruction. We see here in um, this graph, we got our heart, Satan's temple. And what do we have around it? Perversions, idolatry, witchcraft, pride, unforgiveness. This is what establishes Satan's kingdom in us. Now the works of the flesh are manifested. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, jealousy, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, for the which I tell you before, as I have told, also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Not knowing Christ Jesus in our life, this is what our life is about. We can say that we're good people, and maybe we do good things. Satan's always out there trying to do good things to deceive us. If we believe that we don't need God in our lives. What we just read previously still is a part of our life, no matter what. Let's look at uh, God's kingdom working in us. Galatians 5, 22, verses 25. We see in the middle, after Christ comes in our life, after the Holy Spirit brings an anointing and a cleansing, our heart, God's temple. Now we went from Satan's temple being in us, God's temple. It says here, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. Without that, we have nothing. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, tempers, and as such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. And I love this last verse. 
If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Amen. If we have the Spirit of Christ in us, we have the love of Christ, and that love produces the fruits of goodness, gentleness, kindness. If we have the Spirit of Christ, uh, Satan in us, our life produces the spirits or the lust, hate, uh, murder, drunkenness. I mean, we can name a list a mile long. We may think we're good people, but we're nowhere in there. Okay, principalities, powers, and rulers. Ephesians chapter 6. Which, could you read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, please? Verse 12? Yes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay. That is Satan's kingdom. He is a counterfeit of God. He counterfeits everything. We see here a graft. Satan's the first one on the side. We have the Kalyan, Abaddon, Biel, the beast. Each one of these five can be located and found in the Bible. Satan has created a hierarchy and his kingdom. Now, the book I have in front of me is called Mysterious Secrets of the Dark Kingdom, and I highly recommend anybody to read it. It's an incredible book. The man who wrote this book, his name is J.P. Timmons. He worked in Nigeria, Africa, which is probably one of the areas that the most heaviest witchcraft has ever been found. He's got 20 years of testimonies of people that, oh my, that came to Christ and shared the dark kingdom with him, what takes place. And upon learning some of it, we have here a list of these demonic spirits and their activities. Apollyon, is, uh, his primary goal is to turn people away from God into idolatry. We should be careful of, or we should be careful to identify, to define idolatry also. It is not just the worship of graven images, but sticks and stones. It is, it is these, but much more. Anything can be an idol. In America, most people idol is money, sex, or sports. Whether you spend the most time during the th uh, thinking about, this is your God. So we can really, find some things here. Abaddon, which is the next one on the list. His goal is to pollute the human race by any means. He is in charge of polluting, corrupting habits such as smoking, cocaine, and other drugs, rock music, pornography, homosexuality, fornication, incest, bestiality, pedophilia, and alcohol. The next one is Belial. His main objection is to cause war and death. He likes to destroy people and see them die. And it's amazing, people, that these things we take for granted. Who's behind all that taken? The last one is the beast. Those who have traveled to the spiritual plane where the beast lives describe him as a fat, red-looking man sitting upon a throne. His appearance is like a gorilla, but his symbol is the occult world is the leopard. All the false religions are now in preparation for his appearing with the Antichrist. Those who follow and worship him will, will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone to be uh, tormented forever. This one is called The Powers. Again, it comes from the same book. And uh, these powers are below, below the principalities. These are similar rulers who rule the world. Every one of these principalities and powers, they don't personally themselves attack us, even though it can happen. They have associates, demon spirits, that work with these devils. And uh, believe me, there's not a few of them. There's very many, more than we can probably imagine. And the first one here on the powers is Astaroth, which is, um, Astaroth is charged with all natural religions and what we call paganism. Everyone in the world where the uh, celebrate craft festivals, which is most countries, she is uh, behind it. She also delights herself in crop sacrifices from the people. You can see that she is usurping God's position and wanting to be worshipped. 
for providing food to humans. The next one here is uh, Baal. Baal is the power uh, who was worshipped by the Canaanites as gold. He is the bull god to represent by the bull. Okay, so Baal also is responsible for uh, alcohol, um, alcohol, tobacco, drugs, sex, murder, pride to control his victims. The original use of drugs was in religious worship and still throughout most of the pagan world today. The next one is Beelzebub. Beelzebub is in charge of collecting the blood sacrifices made to Satan. The next one is uh, Ariton. This power is in charge of, uh, of all the demons and agents involved in magical powers. The next one here on the list, uh, I think I got ahead of myself, is uh, Payman. His power is to one who will pretend to be the voice of God to fool people. He works in the white garment churches, which is mostly in Africa. Payman, like Satan, will often masquerade as an angel of light. He will introduce himself as Michael, the archangel. He is the lord over soothsayers and fortune tellers. By the way, that's the that's demon that came before uh, the Mormon prophet. Yes. Uh, pretending to be Michael. Mm -hmm. That's him. Yes. Okay, Asmodi. Asmodi is heavily involved with sexual immorality and he marries people for Satan. He is responsible for the spirit of Jezebel in the Bible and often works with Baal. A lot of these powers and principalities we will work together. Uh, Magog. Magog is in, instrumental in controlling the demons who cause anger and hate. He uses these servant spirits just as Asmodi does in marriage. May God use them in uh, stir up fights of war. He normally works with Belial. <coughs> Together they like to see people possessed with what is called the triple spirit. Anger, fear, and hate. You know, right there, those three words. Working in deliverance ministry, I see this pattern, anger, hate, and fear, more than anything else that shows up in deliverance. Uh, Christians, on, on the average, believe me, can be demon-possessed. I've worked with some Christians and some pastors, um, anywhere from a dozen to three dozen demons. It's, it's a phenomenal. Let's go on a little bit. This spirit can enter as three, and it usually does. This triple spirit also works with 13 other spirits, including unforgiveness, which is so destructive. So those are the powers and principalities. And this is just a kind of a breakdown of how that works. We saw that Satan's kingdom, his throne, he's the top of the pyramid. Then we have princes and princesses and demons below that. These are also the rulers and then men and women. Now, the men and women are generally witches, warlocks. They uh, work with the primary purpose of the powers. They... Uh, really love Satan so much that they do whatever it takes to gain prestige in his kingdom of the different levels. Uh, the uh, human powers can be also kings, emperors, uh, they can be presidents, they could be um, politicians, and we're beginning to see our handful of politicians in this world today. So we know what's taking place. They can be also religious leaders. Oh, hey. Uh, yeah, I hate to say TBN, but I've yeah. seen a few of them there. Yeah. I have seen religious, as Pastor Butch said. I've watched some Christian programs, Christian programs, and literally noticed and literally saw demonic symbols being used in the logos. Yeah. I know how people love Billy Graham. And they think he's probably the greatest evangelist in the world. But Billy Graham's also a 33rd degree Mason. And he died as a Mason. He has made statements of um, everybody goes to heaven. There's many different roads that people can go to heaven. Muslims, 
they can go to heaven. They don't use the name Jesus. The Buddhists can go to heaven and they don't use the name of Jesus. The Christians use the name of Jesus. But there's many different roads, as Billy Graham had said. Now, if you want proof of this, the ministry here can get you that proof if you want to see that. Okay. Now, it says here, can a Christian become demon-possessed? Yes. How? Uh, door openers. Any temptation that one acts upon, any temptation, uh, or any sin that you allow in your life, mm -hmm. this allowed demon spirits to possess, harass, or torment any person. How many of you out there as Christians, has stepped into a, a bad relationship or an ungodly relationship. How many of you out there had decided, eh, nobody's going to see this, I know it's a temptation, and then found your life really absolutely miserable, you found yourself wanting to repeat it, and what took place is you allowed yourself to surrender your rights over to whatever demonic entity was attacking you at that time. There is a gate to the carnal self is fivefold. They are the five senses, sight, smell, sound, taste, and touch. This is the only way that demon spirits can take authority in our life. This is the only way that this can happen. Kelly, would you look up uh, James chapter three? Oh, what do we got here? Ch James chapter, no, I'm sorry, first John chapter three, verse four. Now, if we give rights to the devil, we have to take them back. And it's through the blood of the Lamb that we can do that. Uh, we have a verse here that I'd like to kind of always make a good point at this time on. What does that verse say? Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Any transgression of the law goes into an act of disobedience, which scripture says is unclean, and any uncleanness is an action of a demonic spirit working in, on, or around our life. They make us think their thoughts are our thoughts. And when we accept them as our thoughts, then we gave them authority. So, a demon can come through any of these five gates by tempting the guard at the door, God has given us protection. If the guard allows the demon in, then the demon has rights, he has power, he has authority, curses, and assignments on your body. The demon gains total control over the person. By allowing demon spirits, and believe me, even today, I still fight them in my own personal life. But we have to recognize that the Dark Kingdom is a lot more powerful than we give them credit for. Mm -hmm. They are more destructive. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, it says, The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I come to give them more, a life more abundantly. But the first part of the verse, to come, to come kill, steal, and destroy. And I have seen where Satan has killed people. Just a simple little temptation in somebody. And they step out on the road the wrong way, or get too close to a cliff, or make a foolish decision, and they're dead. Satan many times is behind it. People committing suicide. There's a point in people's lives when people commit suicide. You have to understand, when they get to that point, when they're picking up that gun, they still have complete control of themselves. As soon as they touch that gun, all of a sudden they find themselves holding it, and they're trying to push it away from their head, and the demon's saying, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself and you're losing complete control, and now you got your finger on the trigger, and you're still losing complete control, and you pull that trigger. A lot of times, demon spirits will pull it for you. So, yes, they will kill. Um, and Joe, I will say this too, that the demons don't always approach you as a horned beast either. No, they approach you as an angel of light. Yes. In fact, um, 1 Corinthians, uh, I think it's verse, or is it 2 Corinthians chapter 13, talks 13, about yeah. And Satan, Satan comes as a minister of light, and his apostles come as a minister of light. <clears throat> now, I know Kelly read a little bit of her booklet, uh, just an aspect out of her booklet, but I have here, Can Hell Save Me? It's her testimony. 
And I'm going to ask her again just to give a little bit of, of what happened. We have this booklet at the ministry. There is a small donation. If you call and ask, we'll tell you what it is. And we'll make it available for you if you'd like to. Uh, it's only 11 pages long, but it's a very powerful testimony. Kelly, would you tell us what happened in the hospital when you asked the psychiatrist to take your life? Since the demons had complete control of my thoughts and, and just my complete body, what I had done is I went to, into was talking to my psychiatrist. And in Montana, it is legal to have the lethal injection. I said to the psychiatrist, I says, I want to end it. I says, just give me the lethal injection. I want off the face of this earth. Well, as soon as he did that, or I, I said that, I was immediately taken into a secluded room. I was stripped down and put into what they call a suicide jacket. Um, because they thought, you know, they didn't want me to harm myself or nor harm anybody else. But as I was there, um, I had an outer body experience. And my outer body experience was the Lord took my, my spirit and took me to the outer edges to be an observer of exactly what my destination was if I had changed my life and it showed me what hell was all about. It's disgusting. It's, it's dark. It's hot. It's smelly. And the only thing I, I kept hearing, I could hear people in torment. I can hear people screaming. Um, but I did hear one person say, why me, Lord? Why am I here? I'm not supposed to be here. Well, that person was, it was showing myself being a carnal Christian and, and, uh, I don't know how long this took place. It, it was just, it could have been three minutes. It could have been a half an hour. I don't know. But when I came, when I came back from that out of body experience, I said, I, I said, I said, Lord, and I've got, I've got it in my testimony. It says, you know, forgive me for kicking you out of my life. I want you back into my life. Well, when I did that, some of the dem uh, the demons had left. I mean, they just, oh, we're not going to touch her. She, you know, um, I was supposed to be in that institution for th for 90 days. Granted, I was on psychotropic drugs. I was on, you know, uh, antidepressant, antipsychotic, because they, they claimed that I was bipolar. I was manic depression. I was manic. Uh, the depression, I was very depressed. Being being attacked by by approximately uh, about 70, 76, somewhere in there, demonic spirits that were just I it wasn't me. Um, I was I was fear, big word. It was complete fear. Um, but after I had accepted the Lord back in my life, like I said. Uh, I got home, and when I got home, it took t two more days to get the rest of the, get it all cleaned out, get the rest of the demonic spirits out. Also, because they told me from the beginning that I'd be on the medication the rest of my life. What I did is I had the tray in front of me with all the medication, and I... We prayed and was delivered from that medication. Granted, I would not have any withdrawals and no side effects. But as soon as as soon as Joe was doing the deliverance on the medication, I let out the biggest belch. I mean, I mean, it was right in his face. I mean, it's a big belch, and that's t telling me that's evidence of the spirits leaving um, because they come out of orifice. Um, and uh, I had no side effects. I had, you know, but what we ended up doing, because I would have been in this system again, they wanted to extend it. 
I would have been back into the in, into the mental institute if I had not been, you know, uh, compliant to their to the taking the medication. So what we did is that's when we moved to Oklahoma City to get more education on deliverance ministry. We went to uh, Everett Cox, who is has a deliverance ministry in Oklahoma City. And every Monday night they have deliverances. We went into what they call a war room. The war room was where we had the training. And we, you know, we, we learned a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, if it hadn't been for what I went through, that's how we got introduced into deliverance yeah. ministry. That, that, that is self and the sovereignty of Almighty God. He used your trial to bring forth victory. Right? Yes. In fact, um, even before what happened with Kelly, God was already hound-dogging me about deliverance because I was always interested. I always liked the idea of it. It was a field that I never heard people talk about. I hear the excuses in the world that when Jesus died on the cross, he did away with it. Light and dark can't mix. We can't forgive people. I hear everybody's theology on why it's not an important thing. And yet, I have people, like Baptists, they say, well, light and dark can't mix, but yet, I have Baptist, Baptist people come to me in secret, saying, Joe, I got this problem. This thing's tormenting me, because they know that nobody else will listen to them. The church today, in many ways, has kicked people to the curb in deliverance. They'll say, well, go get this psychotropic job. Well, you're taking an opiate. All opiates is, is is a gateway opener for Satan to come in. Um, the psychotropic drugs they have proven scientifically and documented does not and will not ever work on people. They're just drugs of lobotomy. So in Kelly's case, it was good that we've kicked it in the bud really fast, but God used Kelly to get my attention because at that time I was... Well, previously to that, I gave up my pastoral ship as a licensed pastor. I enjoyed it. I loved it. But then God put me into a different ministry, and he's used me very well here. We have a website, which I'll cover a little bit later. But now I'm covering another area, because I know some of you right now are starting to feel probably agitated, probably starting to feel your gut moving a little bit, maybe pain in your chest. We have something called ungodly soul ties. And I'm going to run through this pretty quick, and then we're going to actually do deliverance today. I'm believing somebody's going to be healed. Somebody's going to be set free of oppressing spirits that's been tormenting them for years. And yet they love Jesus. I just don't want to see them go to the grave with carrying pack and those critters with them. I'm going to believe that whatever takes place today is not me. It's through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> But I, before I ever do anything like this, there's one prayer that I go into. Let's go into a prayer. Gracious Father God, we give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. We know the blood of the Lamb is upon this place. We know that the Holy Spirit right now is hound-dogging people out there who's listening. We know that some people are diseased caused by demon spirits. We know some people are oppressed caused by demon spirits. And we know that there's some torment going on by, caused by demon spirits. Lord, we know that the ungodly soul ties of bad marriages, uh, relationships gone wrong, is tormenting people. So we just say that we need to release the power of the Holy Spirit now to all who's hearing this day and all who will hear afterwards. All demon spirits involved in tormenting, possessing, and harassing all you people out there, right now I put you on notice. When I send you to defeat a Jesus, you must go, and I will release the warring angels to send you there in pieces if necessary. All demon spirits who leave anybody through this mini deliverance, I forbid you to return. I forbid you to transfer in any, any person, place, thing, object, house, car, animal, or object, you must go and report to the feet of Jesus. And I bind your authority, your curses, your power, and your assignments. In Jesus' name, I call now on the blood of the Lamb and a wall of fire to surround everybody who is listening. In Jesus' name. Okay, in ungodly soul ties, 
We all have them. <clears throat> There's areas here that may not apply to you if I do mention them. And if it doesn't apply to your children or to your mother or to your dad or aunt, uncle, friend or workplace. You know, if you repeat them, don't worry about it. <clears throat> this is going to be for everybody, so I have to include this. I'd like everybody to say, Jesus, I forgive, and name the person, just go ahead and name them now, for all that has happened, and just repeat this after me, all that has gone on, because you say that I must forgive to be forgiven. I make a decision to forgive whoever that may be, go ahead and name them, <laughs> and I forgive myself for the parts I may have played. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. I take any negative and tormenting feelings and unforgiveness and judgments that I carry towards name the person. And I put these into my hands. And if you can hold your hands together, just put your hands together as like a cup and just say any hurts, bitterness, resentment, anger, offenses, feelings of abandonment, betrayal neglect, rejection, and deception, manipulation, and control. And just say, Jesus, here they are. I'm tired of packing these all these lives. I want your burdens, not mine. Also, in Jesus' name, I also break the power of any curses and judgments, whoever that person may be, may have spoken over me. If it's a parent breaking generational curses, I cancel any curses I may have spoken over whoever that person may be. Just think about ungodly soul ties or myself. I cancel any ungodly vows that I may have made and I choose to break them now. <coughs> Excuse me. I also terminate in Jesus' name any ungodly soul ties, I keep the godly ones, that exist between myself and others. I do this spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, sexually, if it applies. And I command any evil spirits that have come through these soul ties to depart. Control spirits coming through, name the person. And any associated demon spirits to now go from me. Demon of the curses, in the name of Jesus, go. That's ungodly soul ties. That's breaking those bad relationships. That's... Breaking the torment that comes against us. <clears throat> so often as we enter into bad relationships, and I've known people that got married to people who weren't Christians as they were a Christian, and it, it literally destroyed their faith. The second area of our ministry that we get into is called, I call it a demonic suspect list. My wife calls it the... Um, Ah, problem list. Again, deliverance is important. We have um, things that happened in our past. We've gotten over them. We broke away from them. But yet there are things in our past that maybe keeps getting repeated, brought back up. We have uh, problems we deal with today on a daily basis. And as I go through this list, I will give small comments. If... I hit on something here that you say, hey, I got this, sounds like me, then don't be afraid. Um, it can be dealt with. There's a way to deal with it. <clears throat> the first one on this list, and this is what we work with, every area here is a demon spirit working in, on, or around us. First one is anger. Rage, wrath towards God or self, irrational anger, temper, violence. The second one is called bitterness. Hate, self-hate, unforgiveness of self and others. Unforgiveness is the most destructive weapon Satan has in his arsenal. If he gets us into unforgiveness, we have given him rights. It's called hate. If we hate people, then it's spiritual murder. So it's wise to let go of that hate. Uh, the next one is... Um, here is hurt, resentment, revenge, rationalization, jealousy, envy, again, spiritual murder. The next category we deal with is bondage, 
hypoactivity, overbearing, talkative, inpatient, stealing, cheating, physical pain, victim. Uh, victimization many times is that we are the victim that victimizes our own self. Blocked emotions, affection, physically cold and hot, workaholic, perfectionist, tension, headache, migraine, insomnia, compulsion, competition, unclean, messiness, hoarding, arson, driving too fast. The next one is called the condemning spirit. And, you know, people who go through condemning themselves usually grew up in a family where the mother or father said, you're stupid, you can't do nothing right. Or they'll say, you're the best worker in the world, you're really smart, you really got it going good, but you're dumb. You know, the, mm -hmm. and, you know, this is what brings on the guilt or the, con the condemning spirit in our lives. It's conditioning, and we accept it. And that is guilt, unworthiness, inferiority, lower state of competence, lower state of dignity, insecurity, shame, shyness, embarrassment, intimidation, oversensitive. We have the next one is the confusion spirit, forgetfulness, mind control, mind blocking, mind hindering, Bible reading. Believe me, a lot of people get confused reading their Bible. Bible study, they get a hard time reading the Bible. Double-mindedness, procrastination, illiteracy. The next one is called the deception spirit, accepting lies, self-deception, delusion, blinding, deceit, denial, lies to the mind, communicating with demons. Control spirit, this is normally where we find gatekeepers, is ruler, manipulation, know-it-all, chauvinism, possessiveness, domineering, accident prone. The word know-it-all here, and we have all met them, they're people that generally have been hurt really bad in their lives. They're people that uh, they don't like being argued to. They're always right and can do no wrong. Their theology is, well, their theology is better than ours because they'll disagree with us every time. And of course, they also disagree with God as well. But these people have generally been hurt people who've been badly hurt somewhere some <clears throat> trauma put them in a position where they now they have a put a protective shield up because they don't want people to see how bad they hurt okay let's go on cravings and addiction alcohol nicotine coveting drugs medication mind-altering drugs which goes to the mental illness area gluttony food sweets caffeine affection sex Pornography, gambling, cheating, stealing, video games, television, craving of material things. I'm going to hit on video games for a minute. If you want to destroy your faith in God, start playing video games. There is not a single video game out there that's actually even created, even some of the Christian video games, I question, that has not occultic symbols in it. Is not created by people that are in love with demon spirits. You'll see uh, satanic symbols in them. You'll see um, destruction in them. Even the simple little games, there's a couple out there, one's called Zuma. Uh, try to shoot the little balls, get points. As the balls go around, where's it going to? It's going to a starburst with a skull in the middle of it that swallows up your balls. If you lose, it says, so many lives left. Those are curses. There's demonic spirits behind them. So video games are extremely dangerous, and they are just like doing an addictive drug, such as cocaine and heroin. There's no difference. It works in the dopamine in the brain the same way. Death wish. Uh, suicide, murder, abortion. By infirmity, by disease, anytime someone commits abortion, that innocent blood is a sacrifice to Satan, and it is gathered up. That blood is gathered up and kept in a blood bank in heaven, or in Satan's kingdom. The next one is called the destroyer spirit, withdrawal, separation of relations, marriage, compromise, division, divorce, self-destruction, self-mutilization, failure, tragedy, sabotage, Body piercing, not good. Body piercing is a way of surrendering your rights over to Satan. You're taking your body and actually destroying it and disfiguring it. 
The next one here is called tattoos. I don't care what kind of a tattoo somebody puts on themselves. They may put a cross on there trying to compromise or trying to justify why they did one. But if you look at most of the tattoos out there, and I'm going to include the crosses on it, many of them are satanic symbols. The yin and the yang, the serpent, the dragon, uh, the Matisse cross. All these are symbols of the underworld. These go back to demon worship as over 4,000 years ago. And the last one on this section is called cutting oneself. The reason why people cut themselves with a razor blade, because they're trying to cut the demons out of themselves. They're trying to cut that pain out and it doesn't work. It just makes things worse. Deaf and done. Seizures, convulsions, deafness. Sometimes it's physical or spiritual. Doubts and disbelief. Uh, unbelief, not trusting, skepticism. Next one is fatigue. Tiredness, laziness, insomnia, weakness, sleeping, slumbering, old and tired. Next one here is false compassion and responsibility. Codependency, need to rescue, false burden. This next one here, false prophecy. This is when you hear the voices talk in your head. This is when you um, hear the false voices saying, well, Maybe we should go here, or maybe we should do this, or maybe uh, maybe that's not in the Bible. Maybe this is what's really in the Bible, and it's not there. It's a complete counterfeit of what God's teaching. The other parts of it is talking to self or talking to demons. You might as well add the last two together because many times people, if you listen to them talking to themselves, and they get real quiet, and they start talking, and they start listening, Actually, they're actually communicating with a demon. They may not believe it. They may not be aware of it. They may not even accept it. We all talk to ourselves. And sometimes we do it just to work some situation out or we're listening to the Lord. But in many cases, people just ramble on talking to themselves. Saying, well, how does this work? What would be the right way to do it? And they get real quiet. And you can't talk around it because they're really listening intently. They're actually communicating with the demon. It's called clairvoyance. The next section here is Satan's number one, number one area of attack is called fear. Fear is Satan's way of changing the body chemistry. When he changes the chemistry through fear, it brings on more gateways to be opened in the dark kingdom. And we've got fear of abandonment, death, driving, future, spiders, uh, fear of uh, insects, snakes, Fear of man, woman, people, and I've known people who have that fear even today. Fear of animals, fear of being disapproved of, not good enough, confrontation, germs, sickness, Satan, going outside, fear of rejection, fear of public speaking, fear of authority, fear of doctors, fear of success, fear of dark, fear of height, fear of love, fear of loneliness, commitment, being hurt, failure, trusting, all phobias, panic attacks. Satan uses these things to gain access to our life. And like I said, when we enter in a spirit of fear or anxiety, our body has chemical changes, which makes it even that much worse. Now let's go on to heaviness and grief. By the way, that getting called disease is also a chemical change in the body can really mm -hmm. mess up bits of Oh, your chemical changes in your body can actually bring diseases on. Mm -hmm. uh, Unforgiveness actually brings on cancer. Hatred and anger, uh, stress, tension, and pressure brings on heart attacks. It, it alters the body to bring on plaque that builds up in your blood cells. Uh, you know, the perversion sins, which I'm going to get into here real quickly, um, they actually alter the, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of it's uh, Serotonin? Yeah, the serotonin in the brain where it, it gives you a temporary pleasure of okay. feeling good, but it, temp it, it doesn't last. It falls up. Then it's got to be repeated again. It's part of the demon spirit controlled. Um, There's never enough to keep you happy. Mm -hmm. No, no. You can't stay happy over anything. Okay, let's get into um, heaviness and grief, or stress, which is grief, sorrow, sadness, anxiety, nervousness. Uh, stress, pressure, tension, those three right there, stress, pressure, tension is what causes heart attacks. <clears throat> Crying, broken heart, defeatism, unloving, 
self-pity, pouting, emotional, pain, despair, disappointment, entrapment, loneliness. All these of uh, the grief and sorrow, these is connected to the sin of idolatry. You're putting yourself up above everything else. You're putting yourself up above God. Look at me. I'm feeling so bad today. I'm feeling so stressful. I'm feeling, and, and you start shaking. This is the anxiety coming. And your body starts to shake and convulse. This is demonic. The next one here is lying to. <clears throat> believe me. Butch, how often do we even lie to ourselves today? Oh, all the time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Every day. Okay. Maybe this is lying to others. Exaggeration. Oh, lying to ourselves. And like we just said, we'd lie to ourselves all the time. Believing Satan's lies. Or demons of the lie program. Satanic lie program. Let me give you an example. Let's say we got a person over here named Connie. Connie's going along. She's working. She's doing her job. She's just being herself. And all of a sudden, she, in her mind, she hears, you know, I really don't like that person over there. I don't like the way they dress. I don't like the body piercing and the earrings all over their body. They look ugly. Was it us who said it? Or was it something that demonic spirit wanted to make us think their thoughts or our thoughts? It happens all the time. We lie to ourselves in those ways. Okay, the next part is idolatry. Uh, material things. Self-judgment sets us up as to be a God. We're judging people wrongfully. We are to righteously judge people. We are righteously to confront people. But when we do it out of God's timing, when we do it out of spite, hate, anger, or bitterness, then we are judging inappropriately and it's not according to God's word. Now we are becoming like little gods. We hold up people higher than ourselves, coveting, our pets are more honorable, money, hobbies, games, sports, business, work, computer, Twitter, Facebook. And I tell you, I've seen people get onto Facebook and they live on Facebook all day long. It's their entertainment. They cannot break away from it. It is so destructive in their lives that Facebook is actually destroying families. It's bringing divorces in families. It has become where the mother's so much into Facebook that she doesn't take care of the babies. She's not cooking. She's not cleaning house. Fathers get so involved in Facebook, they're not going to work. And it controls them. And it literally is becoming a control mechanism to bring them down. The next part of this is entertainment, television, past, American Indian ways, food, sex, alcohol, drugs. The next part here, and this is what brought Satan down in his kingdom, is pride, haughtiness. Self-centered, <coughs> self-sufficiency, ego, vanity, spiritual pride. Here's the problem with many Christians today, what they have problems with, and some non-Christians, self-righteousness. We can't be righteous. None of us can. It's only Christ Jesus who dwells within us is the righteousness. Because we're our righteousness is filthy as rags. But we try to justify ourselves that way. I feel important arrogance. Mental illness. Now, I uh, worked with a lot of mental illness people. I've had some great success with some, and I've had some bad... Uh, I had deliverances that didn't work. I worked with a man that was heavily in mental illness here a little over two years ago. And I watched demon spirits, as we started fighting against the demon spirits of mental illness, literally pick him up out of a chair and slam him to a floor. man weighed 333 pounds. But we watched him picked up out of a chair and slammed to a floor. I watched the same demon spirits in the mental illness realm manifest in this man with his face, I, I'd say turning inside out, the, the skin rolling, uh, eyes turning back, come up out of a chair with every intent to cause physical harm to my wife and me. And I looked the man in the eye and I said, devils, sit down. And the angels pushed him back into his seat. We had a deliverance that night. It was an incredible deliverance. But madness, mania, hyperactivity, ADD and ADHD, I don't understand why they classify that as a mental illness. It is a vaccine drug 
um, reaction that caused these problems. Also, it is the food that we feed our children and some adults that this is happening. But nonetheless, they classified it a mental illness, I will use it. Retardation, deaf, dumb, schizophrenia. In fact, you know what causes schizophrenia in many cases? Smoking marijuana. It's been classified now in the psychiatry field that smoking marijuana causes schizophrenia. If you've been around a person who's been involved in smoking marijuana for years, who's, who's really smokes it heavy, to be around them is they're actually very paranoid people. Other things cause it just as well. Bipolar is caused by children who are put down by their parents, or one child is not very loved by the other parent, and it causes a kind of a separation. That's bipolar. The next one is uh, paranoia, hallucinations. Hallucinations many times is not caused by drugs, but it's caused by a demonic lie program that has been established on us through rites that we gave to demon spirits. Next one is manic depression, so fragmentating, NPD and DID. So fragmentating is when you go through things such as this nature here, there's pieces of your soul that breaks away from your body. We have to call them back and unite them back to the rest of the body. Okay. Uh, the next one is the torment spirits, harassment, nightmares, mockery, funny, fully, uh, the rejection spirits, fear of rejection, uh, self-rejection, rejection in the room. All this takes place if the fear of rejection is because we rejected God, so we reject ourselves. Perversion. This is a very touchy one. Lust, fantasy, statistic, lesbianism, homosexuality cross-dressing, same-sex marriage, masturbation. In fact, masturbating, when people do that, and I know there's some young people possibly listening, I ask the parents to please help explain this to them. Um, it's self-satisfaction. It releases the dopamine in the brain. It brings contentment. But when you sit there thinking of a person in your mind, you're actually having an action of, or actually doing this sexual act to a devil you're having sex with a, with a devil spirit. It's not because of what thought you had in your mind. It's what you're really doing with the dark kingdom. The next one is adultery, abuse of children, pedophilia, incest, incubus, uh, succubus. succubus. Incubus, succubus is having literally having real sex with demon spirits. One's male, one's female. Prostitution, harlotry, rape, exposure, bestiology, pornography. The next one is poverty spirit, financial bondage blockers. The next one is profanity, cursing, blaspheming, taking God's name in vain. The next one is the rebellion spirit, antichrist spirit, stubbornness is rebellion, disobedience, anti-submissiveness, self-will. The next one past that is the religious demons, traditions, doctrines, uh, demon, uh, denominationalism. In fact, I will put it here, um, doctrines, there's people, when, angel, when Satan comes as an angel of light, he sets up a doctrine in a church and says, there's no hell. People just lie in the grave. State of the dead. That's a lie of the devil. That's doctrinalism. Another one in doctrinalism is a good example is speaking in tongues. I'm not against it. I believe in it. It's a gift of God. But according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it's a gift. But when people say, you got to have it to prove the world that you got it right and everybody else has got it wrong, now we're getting into doctrinalism again. Denominationalism is um, anytime a denomination says we got it right, everybody else has got it wrong, out of the 900 denominations in the world, 740 of them in this country, one says, I got it right, you got it wrong, you don't follow me, you're going to hell. We know Jesus. Oh, we believe in the Trinity, but we also believe Jesus is Michael the Archangel. Weird things like that. That is occultism. <clears throat> you can't deny that. It is. Okay. Legalism, formalism, martial arts, false religions. We talked about a demon that does that one. False prophet spirit. Yoga. Uh, yoga and Kundalini spirit brings in sexual demons. Secret societies. KKK. Freemason. Eastern star. 
These last three are very, very dangerous. Next one, and we're almost done with this, selfishness, self-gratification, self-will, self-righteousness, strife, conflict, bickering, argument, quarreling, fighting, criticism, judgment, gossiping, accusations, fault-finding, meanness, cruelness, or others. We have the Jezebel spirit. Man can be, it can be for a man or for a woman. Uh, seductive behavior, witchcraft, manipulation, and control. The last one here, if you've ever played with an Ouija board and their witchcraft and their cults, you've introduced yourself to demon spirits. Familiar spirits and spirit guides, if you ever sat down with a palmistry, had your hand read, you've introduced yourself to uh, demon spirits. Div divination, sorcery, horoscopes, astrology, fortune teller. If you had someone tell you your fortune, you entered yourself into activities with a demon spirit having rights. Worship of the dead, charms, crystal, Torah cards, pendulum, voodoo, witchcraft, santeria, medicine man spirits, Indian witchcraft, Shamanism, psychic seance, witchcraft control. And this is just scratching the surface, people. There's so much other out there, but this is the most obvious. But I'd like to do something. Anyone out there that had agreed to any of this in their life, I have a prayer, and I'm going to ask everybody in here to follow along with that prayer as well. <clears throat> We're going to break every curse or every sin of a spirit that has come into your life. And I'd like everybody to say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, please forgive me of the sin. Please forgive me of the sin. sin. Name the sin. My goodness, where do we start? <laughs> For I put these sins That's under the blood, the, the, blood the blood of the Lamb. Under the blood of the Lamb. For the forgiveness of my sins. For the forgiveness of my sins. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Demon spirits. Demon spirits. And associates. And associates. No longer can use this sin. No longer can use this sin. To gain access to my life. To gain access to my life. I have been forgiven. I have been forgiven. I choose to forgive myself. I choose to forgive myself. And I choose to forgive all others. I choose to forgive all others. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I'm going to say all demon spirits, all who heard this prayer spoken today, we cancel your rights, your authority, your curses, and your assignments, and your power. We rescind those things off of all who listen this day. We bind you in the name of Jesus with the evidence of either a cough, sneeze, burp, or yawning, that shows the evidence of demons leaving or the oppressors letting go. We command you now, demon spirits, in the name of Jesus Christ, up and out, up and out, in the power of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. We forbid you to return. We forbid you to send any back. And we command you now to go to the defeat of Jesus. If you refuse to leave, we call upon the warring angels to chop you in pieces if necessary to defeat Jesus. Up and out right now in the name of Jesus. But we call upon the blood of the Lamb cover all who's confessed, who said this prayer, and acknowledged their, their sins. In the name of Jesus, it is done. It is finished. Mm. <coughs> Any comments? Well, people have to leave. I've got to go take a breather from you. It's been seven okay. hours, and I can go. Got it. Okay. All right, Dick. We'll, we'll see you next time. Well, yeah, see you later. Okay. Anybody that has really felt the demon spirit leave them, I encourage you to call Butch's office Monday. We also have a website you can look at. It's um, A L D. No. I'm sorry. It's L A D M Now. Dot WordPress. Dot com. And you can look over the website, and um, we have a lot of material there that will help people in deliverance in their own lives, and um, we. Really hope and pray that you will check it out. Would you have any comments or anything to say? No, I, I, all this is so real, so relevant. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to be on guard all the time, 24-7. Right. We're bombarded everywhere we go with all manner of temptations. Mm -hmm. The temptation itself is not a sin. It's given into it as a sin. Mm -hmm. right. Our Savior is tempted every way that we're tempted, but did not sin. 
Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what the blood was shed because we all have come short of the glory of God. Mm-hmm. So I would ask you, and just say what Joe said, call if you have any questions. You can call the office Monday morning. If you want to talk to myself or Joe, we'll get you in touch with him or whatever. Just call 800-777-4403 mm-hmm. and ask for help, give us testimony. I'll put you in touch with Joe. His phone number is 304 621 1448. 304 621 1448. No, it's no. 1488. Oh, I'm sorry, 1488. I'm sorry. 304 621 1488. Yeah, hello, Joe and Kelly. Mm-hmm. Hope you enjoyed it, learned something. Hope it blessed you. See you next time.